So the autumn time is amazing to catch fish like these. Continue watching the video if you want to find out how. So we've come here today to the Glee fishery in Leicestershire and instead of catching carp, we're actually going for silvers. Coming into October now, it's a perfect time of year, especially for them quality silver fish. It's a really good time of year. And obviously we've got a lot of leagues that will come in, we've got silverfish matches, or if you just want to go and have a nice day's fishing, it's a perfect time of year. So in today's video, we're going to show you how to target good quality silverfish, show you the feeding, the tactics and the bait needed. So continue watching the video and we'll show you how to do it. So bait choice for today, I've got simply, I've got a kilo of swimstone black ground bait, nice dark fish meal ground bait, which is perfect these skimmers and ropes and everything like that, what we're going to be catching today. Uh, in terms of sort of baits that we're going to be feeding with the ground bait, I've got casters, you can't really go anywhere without casters on these commercials because them bigger skimmers and bigger ropes and stuff like that I absolutely love casters and you always catch a better stamp so I always bring casters they're really a sort of a crucial bait I've also got some micro pellets again you can't come anywhere without micro pellets every fish love them but actually here on the hook they're not very good pellets so I actually do like to put a few in my feed but I'm not going to put any on the hook today then coming on to maggots now you can't go anywhere without maggots um, these are mainly going to be a hook bait today you know, good for catching all different sizes of fish, but I don't actually like to feed them because it brings too many nuisance fish in. So they're purely a hook bait. As you can see, a nice simple bait selection. Now let's go and catch some fish. So on the long line today, I'm going to keep it quite simple. I'm just going to put four bulbs of ground in. It's a nice amount, not too much. And you've got to also think of carp on these commercials. If I put too much ground bait in, I'm going to draw loads of carp in and it's going to ruin my day. So I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to put four bulbs in like that into my other tub. And then I'm going to decide how many particles I actually put into the ground bait. So that's four bowls into there. Now, I don't actually want to put too many particles in today because if I put too much in, I can't take it out. So I'm going to sort of fill my way in and see how it goes. So I'm going to put some micro pellets in. I think you've got to put micros in. Obviously, a lot of these fish on commercials, they see these every day and it's what they like to eat. So I'm not going to put many in though. I'm just going to literally put sort of a, a pinch full in like that, a palm full. So there's just an odd, odd one in there because again, I don't want to put too much bait in and bring too many carp in the peg because it's going to spoil my day. And then into that, I've got good old casters. Now, the big quality silverfish, especially here, love casters, so I'm gonna add some casters. But I'm also not gonna to put too many in because like I say, once it's in, I can't take it out. So I'm literally just gonna put, again, probably a palm full of casters in, not too many. And then I'm just gonna mix them in like that. And like I say, I don't want too much um, particles actually in my ground bait because I want actually the fish to take my hook bait. So if I put too many particles in, there's too, many, too much choice then in terms of particles and then it's just going to take longer to pick my hook bait out so i'm going to literally mix them in like that as you can see it's not like absolutely loads in there it's just a few which is perfect i think and then literally just going to make four balls up so again because it's like probably five foot here today i'm not going to squeeze them really tight i want them to hit the bottom and disperse quite quickly because if I stay in rock our balls there's no attraction for the fish then and i just want it to sort of lay out make a nice carpet so i can catch on it quite quickly so in terms of squeezing the ground bait i'm going to give it literally like three little squeezes so it's going to obviously go in get to near the sort of the bottom or on the bottom just start to break down nice so i'm going to just do that and again don't squeeze them too hard because like i say the, the traction as well when it's sort of got little bits breaking off and that that's what the fish are attracted to because they don't live on the bottom they're sitting up in the water so make me fall just get a little bit more So there we go, there's four, ball, four balls made up. Let's go and pot it in. Today I'm actually gonna start on the short pole line, which is around six meters. Now for this, I'm gonna sort of start off with a careful approach. So I'm gonna pot in like a little golf ball sort of size of, of ground bait with just a few micros in and fish like a maggot on the hook and just see what happens. This also gives a, lot, uh, a chance for that long line to settle. So for this, I'm literally ratio wise, I'm literally gonna put in sort of two parts ground bait to sort of one part pellet like that what i'll do is i'll just cut, cut sort of little balls of this in like that and just sort of see what happens and like i say if this mix is no good i can throw it but it just gives me chance a long line to settle and we'll probably give it sort of half an hour 40 minutes so the peg just settles down nicely i'm just going to start on this and see what happens and then like i say later in the day i can start losing casters there i can do a few things so just a nice little starting method 
So I'm going to start now and see how we get on. Right, so let's get these swims fed. So I'm going to start off with that shorter line. So I'm literally, like I said, I'm just going to put a little nugget for the micros and ground bait mix. So probably like the size of a golf ball, like that. I'm just going to pop that in over where I'm fishing. So what I like to do as well, I just like to feed everything slightly back so I can fish past my bait, which is really important for silvers. You normally find them better silvers like to actually be past your bait. I don't know why, but it's always been the same. So I always like to cut everything just a bit shorter. So I'll be fishing there. I'm just going to sort of bring the pole a bit more towards me. I'm just going to pop that in like that. And then when we come in to feed the long line, when we get out there, I'll actually show you. But again, it's the same process. Always cut your stuff back so you can either fish on it or go past. It's really, really important for silver fishing. So like I said, I'm going to cut four bowls in today. So we're just going to whiz these out. Like I say, you see, you see a, quite a common mistake as well when people are feeding the pegs of rush and actually spill ground bait everywhere, which is a real, it can be like really detrimental on, on your day sort of thing. Because obviously you're putting bait everywhere. So just take your time with this, it's really important. So I've actually got a dolly book today, which I'll explain in a bit, but I'm actually feeding to the end of my section. So what I'll do is I'll pop the first one, bang on where I'm sort of in where the far bank marker is. And then I'm going to spread, actually spread them out a bit. So I'm not going to all drop them in the same hole. I want like a little carpet on the bottom where I can run my rig over because it tows as well this lake. So for example, the wind's from left to right today and it's going to tow back into the wind. So the tow's going to go from right to left. So if I put everything in a little tight area, it's just like you catch around your bait here. You don't want it all in a tight area. So I want it just very sort of spread out, make a nice carpet on the bottom and it gives them fish a chance to graze over something. So we're going to whack all these balls into the swim. So like I said, I did that one bang on in front of me. I'm going to put this one like four or five inches to the right. And then again, just spread them out a tad. Don't put them all down the same hole. So you think about it as well, when we're catching a weight of silverfish, they're not all on a tight little shoal. Like you're not, it's not like you're tapping pellets and fishing for one or two carp, for example. You're trying to catch a good amount of fish, so you don't want them all on like a little dinner table. And spread out, are going to spook if you have them too tight. Put this one again slightly to the right. That. And then bulbs of ground bait, they'll sort of get to sort of halfway down, maybe a bit further down than that, and then just start breaking up nice and slow. So like I said, it makes that carpet effect. And as you can see where I'm actually fishing, there's a few bubbles coming up. So I know my ground bait's sort of breaking down now and I'm doing its job. And this one's going to go sort of on the boundary, a bit more to the left of where I'm fishing, where I can see me float. So I've got a nice little spread there. So that's the bait potted in. I'm going to give it five minutes and talk you through the rigs. So on the long line, starting off with the elastic, I've got an orange zip. Now, well, obviously that time of year now, we're in October, it's not too cold yet, so I don't want to drop too light. So I'm going to start on the orange today. I think that's going to be about right. But when it gets colder, either the yellow zip or the pink zip on the really cold days are going to be absolutely perfect. Now, main line on the rigs, I've actually gone for an 016. Now, in the depths of wind, I probably would drop to 014, but you've got to remember, there probably are going to be a few carp feeding, and obviously your rig's going to be tested at times with them if you start hocking a few carp and that. So, 016's absolutely fine. And like I say, I'm not going to be trashing rigs or anything like that, and it's light enough to catch silverfish. So, coming on to the float, we've actually got a 0.6 bulk float. Now, this is a really nice float for this. It's got a nice 1.5 millimetre top, so it's nice and easy to see, but also nice and sensitive. And we've obviously got the traditional round body float, which is really good for stability. Now this leg especially toes quite a bit, so that's really important. And coming down, we've got a wire stem. Again, stability, it's absolutely everything for fishing for skimmers. And we've got that on this float, so it makes a perfect silver float. Coming down to the shotting pattern, I've actually got a bulk of three droppers. So I've got like a little bulk of number eights there. And then I've actually got well, sort of got like two droppers. So I've got two number nines there, like a normal carp rig, really, how I'd do it for carp, similar. 
Um, but you can see there, I've actually got what we call a kicker shot. Now it is sort of like a dropper, but I don't really treat it like a dropper, it's more like a kicker. So when we're fishing these thinner lines, it just kicks everything out so it stops tangles, because obviously thin line can tangle easier. And if you don't have that, you get like spin ups and tangles and everything like that. So that's just like a little kicker. So I don't actually, it's not really like a dropper. And then like I say, the droppers are number nine, number nine, it's nice and heavy. Like I say, when you get a little indication, it will show the bar up nice for skimmers, because like I say, they can be really finicky at times. And if you use, your droppers are too small, you don't see the bite. So that's really important. Then hook link wise, it's got six inches of 012. Like I say, in the depths of winter, I fish like 09, 010, but we're still quite mild, might hook some carp. So it'd be nice to get them out as well. Coming down to the hook, 16 F1 maggot hook. Really nice hook for this. Like I say, in the colder months, dropped down to an 18, even 20, but they're a brilliant hook. Perfect for natural baits. If I was fishing pellets, I'd probably go for the F1 pellets. It's a better shape, but that's my long rig. Coming on to the shorter rig, very similar. The only real difference is I've got a 0.5 uh, bulk float this time. It's probably a foot shallower, so just a slightly lighter float is nicer. Um, Shotting pattern, a bit different on this. We're going to start on this. So, and that starting bit of your session, you just want to literally put whatever you can in your net, whether it be a gudgeon, a roach, little tiny skims, anything while that long line settles. So I've just got like a little tapered bolt like that and it just spreads out as close it gets to your hook. So it's probably around 15 inches in total. So the top shot's like a number eight and then it goes to sort of nines and then tens and it just flutters down lovely and it'll catch everything. And like I say, if I want to change it, I can make it to a bulk and two droppers and do anything like that. So, but I like to start with that. Just put what you can in your net to start with. Hook link, this is literally exactly the same. We've got 012 and a 16 F1 maggot, like I say. No point going too light this time of year because again the water's still coloured, the fish are feeding, so just keep it nice and simple. So we'll start the session off now and see how we'll get on. Right, so I'm going to start on the short line now. So hook bait wise, I've just got a single maggot, nice and simple. And like I was explaining, I'm just going to literally feed a little golf full size of the micro and ground bait mix. Now, as you can see as well, I put like a little pole pot about 10 inches back from my tip. And like I was saying earlier, I want to fish past my bait. I've also got the option to come in back on me bait if I want to. So I'm just going to pop that in like there, in like that, and we'll start fishing. So nice and simple. I've got like a far bank sort of marker, like we always do when we pole fishing. I'm just going to tap that in over that. And that, like I said earlier, it's towing from right to left today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my rig into the right and then it's sort of straightening up. So it's basically like a river, it's, it's flowing like a river, so it's going from right to left. So we've got to put a rig in nice so it's fishing correctly. Like I say, we're starting dead depth today, and like I say, I won't be scared to put some line on the bottom if, if we need to. Just catch some quality silverfish, you need your rig to be nice and still, and your hook bait to be nice and still, so I'm gonna start off like this, and like I say, if I need to add any line or anything, we'll let you know. So I'm just going to set it nice and patiently for a bite. Another trick as well, when you're silver fishing, is actually, oh, got a bite there. Nice little, good little skimmer. What I was going to say is a nice little trick you can do is actually, if you let your bait run down and hold it a bit, sometimes you can find where your bait's going with the toe. So it is very similar sort of to river fishing to an extent, learning where your bait's falling. So if obviously if you're putting like little, like bits of ground bait and stuff in and it's going a bit with the, uh, the toe, you want to find where your bait is and catch the fish. So nice little skimmer, that's probably sort of five or six ounces. Like I say, as well, you get like this, obviously slime and stuff on your line. Now, you see some anglers that don't pick it all off, but I think it's really important to sort of get it all off because obviously when you drop your rig in, it sticks out like a sore thumb on your line. So it's not very good for presentation. So I'm gonna go in exactly the same. It's a single maggot on the hook. Like I say, I can also put two maggots on if I want to, you know, if I want to try and catch some bigger fish. So same again, little ball of ground bait, like that, nicely into my pot. And like I say, this stage in the session, I'm just trying to catch anything I can really while that, short, uh, while that long line settles. So I'm going to probably give that half an hour, 40 minutes, because I don't want to go on it too early as well, because the worst thing you can do with skimmers is not let them settle. 
So if you go straight out, out on it and catch straight away, you can ruin the peg because they're not sort of settled and happy on it. So you've got to let that settle down, get them nice and confident before you go on it. As you can see as well, my float is really dotted down. So it, you'd be surprised. Some of the biggest skimmers can give you tiny little bites. So it's really important to have that float as sort of dotted down as you can. And yeah, another probably thing as well, you can see I've got quite a, a distance between me pole tip and me float. Now, the reason for this is, obviously you look at today, there's a bit of a breeze on the water. So if you've got too much of a short, shorter line between your pole tip and your float and it starts getting really windy, you're not gonna be able to hold your float still, which obviously you're not gonna catch fish. But and also another thing is, if you wanna add line on, obviously, cause it's towing today, if you wanna put some more line on the bottom, if you've not got a decent amount of line you can't do it because obviously the lash is going to end up too short so you're not going to be able to fish very good so i think it's important especially when fishing natural baits to fish quite a, a long lash as we call it so you've got a few different options then another little skimmer i'd imagine yeah so you can imagine today for a in obviously we're pleasure fishing today but if you're in a match or your pleasure session today you start off with fish like that while that long line settles you know you're, you're adding to your net all the time and especially in matches, that can be the difference between winning and not winning at times. So, so again, maggot on the hook. And I'm probably gonna, I'm probably not gonna feed this guy because I still think there'll be bait there on the bottom. I think we've got quite a lot of micro pellets and stuff in, in the feed. So I don't probably feel like it's, I need to feed every chuck. So I'll probably work out how many I can catch off a little nugget and then, then try and obviously feed less because you can be quicker as well. You can be in, in and out, you swim quicker and catch more fish. So if I work it out so I can catch three fish off a little nugget, that's what I'll do. But then if I go in and I'm not stop getting bites, then obviously I know I need to feed more often. So it's all about feeling your way into the session, really. But at the minute, you know, it's a nice little start. I'm happy with that. Because what can happen as well, you can see people on these commercials, they go, they, they feed the peg heavy and they go straight out on it. And like I say, they're waiting for the fish to come come to them straight away where they haven't really got a starting line. So this is just start, like a, a nice little starting line. And you can use people around you also as indicators. So when they go long and start catching, you know it's about time to go long and go for them better fish as well. So you can actually, watching other people can ha really help you as well, like with decision making and timings. Little skimmer, I imagine, yet. Yeah. Like I say, as well, I'm not. Swing, you probably could swing these fish, but like I say, that's when you have your disasters like your tangle rig and tangle rigs, fish ping off. And like I say, in silverfish matches, the difference between winning and losing could be ounces. So if you just take your time and just get every fish in and make it count, it sort of can really reward you at the end of the session. So I'm going to see how many fish I can actually catch off that little nugget now. And then I'm going to decide how often I'm going to feed me peg. Again, it's also, if I feed too much, I'm going to track carp as well, which is not a good thing. So I'm just going to try and work out how many fish I can catch off that little nugget now. I'll right, say so we've got something better here now. Oh, come off. So it might have been foul up properly. Didn't really feel quite right. But you know what, I'm pleased with that because I know there's something obviously better in the swim, better fish. So again, I'm going to straight out on that. There's actually some little bubbles just come up next to me float. So I'm not sure if there's a carp or something in the swim. So we'll have to, we'll have to soon find out, I suppose. So we're getting a few indications as well. So there's obviously some fish around. Like a small fish.
but they you'd be surprised as well with this like stamper fish these sort of hand-sized skimmers you can think oh they're not very big i'm not putting much in the net but believe me the amount of times i've lifted my net out and i've been shocked how much the way it's quite it's, it's quite frightening sometimes what they actually weigh a lot more than you think so just keep literally the silver fish in i think you're better off just keep putting fish in your net and like i say they all add up at the end of the day So what I like to do as well, I like to obviously lay my rig into the tail. Once it's below my marker, I like to put my rig straight in. Get good presentations doing it like this. So as well, what I mean is by this, I like to hold it about a float length out and then slowly lower it in. Once it's sort of the rig straightened out so the fish can actually watch it going down as well. There's a fish. A bit smaller this time. So that's another thing in terms of feeding as well. If the fish are getting smaller, then I probably will look to feed again because obviously sometimes the bigger fish like a bit more food. So if I go in again and catch another smaller stamp of fish, I'll look to feed again because obviously, like I say, the, if you can catch a better stamp, they are obviously going to weigh it at the end rather than catching little blades. So. That's just something you've got to work out and get a feel for. Again, I think that's another small fish, smaller fish. So you can see them last two, definitely been smaller. So they're probably two or three ounce smaller, something like that. So this time I'm going to feed again because obviously I want to try and catch the bet biggest stamp of skimmer I can because obviously it's going to make me catching a better weight a lot easier. So I'm going to stick with the same hook bait. Because a lot of the times well, when you fish double maggot you bump a lot of fish off because obviously them little skimmers can't really get it in the mouth so good. Dead simple little golf ball of ground baited micro mix again. It'll be interesting to see if we catch a better stamp of fish now. We're just going to, when we feed again, so we can see if them better fish come into that bit of food. So again, looking at conditions today as well, it's quite mild, so we might be able to feed quite a bit of bait. Just a bite. Missed a bite. So I missed a couple of bites there as well. I, it might be a sign that I need to squeeze my ground bait a bit harder so them fish could have actually, while well, that ball's going down because I haven't squeezed it very hard, you could have had a couple of bits breaking up so them fish might have come off the bottom then. So that, as well that might be a sign that I need to just squeeze it a bit harder. Because that's the first time I've missed two bites like that. So as soon as I fed as well so it tells me that they'll probably come off the bottom a bit then. With a missed bite. So obviously something I've done there didn't feel right because I've missed three bites in a row, I've not had that so far. So next time I feed I'm going to feed it a lot a lot harder, as in squeezing it harder. Get a little fish. They're like your sort of bread and butter on a lot of these commercials, these little sort of hand size skimmers, anything from sort of three ounce to 12 ounce, they're your sort of, the fish you catch a lot of. So this time, I'm just gonna feed again because there's a smaller stamp, but I just wanna try something. I'm gonna feed me a little ball of ground bait in my crust, really firm this time. So that's probably not gonna break down for a good few minutes now. But, Hopefully, because I get less cloud and bits breaking off, you know, that's going to get the fish on the bottom, probably hold them in the swim a lot longer as well. So it's probably going to take a good few minutes to break down, so... Might be able to catch more fish off it as well.
obviously, if you've seen there, obviously it's still not a massive fish, but we didn't miss any bites then. So obviously the fish have gone straight to the bottom there. Obviously, because I've squeezed it a lot harder, that's gone down almost like a little ball of paste. We've not missed any bites there. So as well, with missing less bites, you're more efficient because obviously every time you strike, you've got to relay your rig in, so you're wasting time as well. Like, so when you're trying to build a bit of a weight early on in your session, it's just these little small things that can make a big difference. You can see as well today, I'm actually a lot of, the you'll see sometimes, obviously, people like to lay the rig in, which I do, to be fair, a lot of the time, but here, we ca you just can't do it because there's too many little roach and stuff, so we've got to get that rig, we've got to sort of get it through halfway down before I can sort of fish effectively, because if I just lay it in dead nice, I just get obliterated by a roach, so you've got to get the rig down, but then once you're from, almost get the presentation nice. Right, so there's another one on the short line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my head down, catch a few of these. Then when I go on the long line, we'll update you and we'll go through how I'm going to fish the long line. So we'll keep putting a few of these in the net and we'll see you in a bit. Right, so we've uh, obviously started the session short. We've had a really good start to the session. and Actually, the skimmers have got bigger, you know, up to two pounds. So it's going really well, but we've caught plenty there now. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go on that longer line and just see what's there and you know, run you through it. So on the hook, like I say, single maggot again, it's been by far the best bait. So obviously originally I put sort of uh, four balls of ground bait in and then uh, I'm just going to literally drop in and just see what happens. And like I say, I've got me little dolly butt on now. So I'm just fishing just past me ground bait, like the same as I was short, probably a foot past. It's really important to do this, I think. because obviously, like I was saying earlier, them bigger skimmers hang off the back of your feed. So you drop it in and see what happens. Exactly the same presentation. Like I say now, I lower the rig in, I'm flicking it to the right and oh, we've got a little fish on there. Flicking it to the right and then it comes back with the toe. So we've got a little skimmer on here, I think. So this is obviously the same sort of fish as we're catching short. And what I'm tempted to actually do on this line is uh, start loose feeding casters with a catapult. Now, the reason I want to do this is it can actually pull them better skimmers and stuff in, you know, that sort of bit of noise going in and stuff like that. So I'm just going to literally have two or three sort of drops in without feeding just to get an idea of what's there before I actually pick it up and do it. But that's what I'm thinking. So if, if I go in and catch the same stamp fish, I'm going to pick that catapult up and attack it a bit more. I think it's a day, obviously, it feels quite mild. And I think it's probably a day where the fish actually want a bit of food, so... I'm just going to see what happens for the next few minutes. But I've got a feeling I'm just going to catch them smaller stamp skimmers again because they seem to be everywhere. You know, the fishing is absolutely brilliant, like it always is here at the Glebe. So again, smaller fish. But yeah, like I say, the, fit, the sport's really, really good. There's a bite every single chuck, which obviously a lot of these commercials around the country, you, you can get good sport like this, they're full of them. Especially this time of year, it's probably like the best time of year. So I'm going to stick with the same hook bait, but I'm also going to look at putting casters on in a bit, because obviously, like I say, you can catch better fish on casters, but as we've just gone on the line, I'm just going to keep it sort of similar. Let's see how it goes, because like I say, on that short line, we did start catching some better skimmers on the same hook bait, so at the minute I don't see too much reason to change. So it's quite a bit windy today, but I'm going to try and do my best to catapult them as accurate, accurately as I can. But like I say, I wouldn't be too, they don't have to go all around the float because we're, we're looking to make a bit of an area when we're doing this sort of fishing. So you don't have to be too tight, long, best as you can really. Like I say, that wasn't too bad at all. So I'm gonna put like two pouches, say 10 casters in, something like that. Got a bite. I'm just gonna see where we go in from here. We start missing bites, we'll probably cut back and maybe put like a little nugget of ground bait in or even use like a little little pole mounted pot and keep the bait more accurate if you're struggling to catapult it we've got different options now 
again, same sort of stamp fish as when we started short. But like I was saying, when we were just uh, when we we're just coming off that short line, the bigger fish were starting to come, so it might be the same out here. And this big as well, I've actually gone, like I say, them bulk and sort of two droppers. I've actually gone for that type of presentation because there's a lot of small fish who just want to get it down. I don't want to be shipping back a tiny little roach all this way out. And I was starting, it was a bit different because I'm looking to catch anything. But on this line, I want to catch a decent fish because it's a long way to ship back. Obviously, like 13 metres. So I'm just going to talk to you a bit about my short line and what happened when I went off camera. So what happened was... Obviously, I started off by just cupping little nuggets of sort of micros and ground bait in and catching like little skimmers. Basically, all I've done is I've sort of carried on doing a similar thing, but I've just made pinch the ground bait a bit harder so it went down a bit more solid. So it basically that balls it to the bottom rather than a bit breaking off. And as we started fishing more and more, the better fish started to come in. So just making that change, and I actually. I, I made the uh, started feeding sort of more often. So instead of feeding, let's say, once every three or four fish, I actually started to feed every single cast, and the fish stamp of fish really improved. I started catching a lot of one to sort of two pound fish. So, let's say you've, it's all about on the day you've got to sort of try things out. It's no good sitting on the same thing and hoping it's going to happen. You like you've got to experiment a bit and try and find what's best on the day. So that was best on that line. So I'm just going to try and work out what's going to be best on this line now. Like I say, I've just started loose feeding. I'm going to see if it makes any difference because, like I say, there's plenty of fish feeding today. But yeah, like I say, similar. I've learned quite a bit on that short line. So what can happen is, if I start catching small fish, I'll put little nuggets of ground bait in, similar to what I was doing short, rock hard, and learn use what I learned off that shorter line. As you can see, there's a lot of smaller skimmers there at the minute. I'd say a bit of a heavy float as well on this rig, got a 0.6 because there's a bit more towing wind out there. But you can see the, the really nice stamp fish they are. They're your sort of bread and butter fish. Get me disgorge up. Like that. So this size 16 hook, it's been absolutely perfect today because the fish are feeding quite aggressive and we're not losing many at all. But what, what I will say is, obviously when it gets colder, the fishing gets harder. Don't be scared of dropping right down. So say fishing an 18 and an 010 or even a 20 on an 08 when it's really, really cold. Because it definitely will get you more bites. <laughs> so like I say, a lot of, what I say a lot of the time as well, fishing's all about experimenting. So if you're not catching, it, don't just sit on the same thing. You've got to think about it a bit and try and make something happen. Because at the end of the day, it's not what we think, it's what the fish want. I'm going to drop that in and fire a few casters. Bump one off there. The maggot looks okay, so we'll put that back in. But like I said, I'm interested to see if this line, if, I st if it starts pretty much start us off pretty much how the, the short line started where I start off catching smaller fish and then catch bigger fish which I think is probably what will happen because another thing as well when I've gone on it I don't know how much bait's left because there's a lot of fish feeding today there might not be loads and loads of bait there so you probably will get the smaller fish first so we might have to up the ante a bit see that feels a that's definitely a better fish straight away so we've just started losing people in casters and there's straight away, didn't take long to catch a better stamp fish. Just take your time with these skimmers, like make everyone count. Say a lovely stamp that is. The other fish you want to be catching, that's probably, probably a pound and a half, beautiful fish that is, really sort of heavy and chunky. Something hook him. See, that was on a single maggot again, which obviously seems the best hook bait today by far. But like I say, I will be trying a caster again in a bit because, like I say, I've had some really, really good days here fishing casters. And normally, that's what you catch your bigger, bigger fish on, like your bream, your proper bream up to like two to three and a half pound. 
But I think another thing is, well, same with silver fishing, is just getting a nice rhythm, you know, put your rig in correctly, don't get too flustered, so put your rig in, put your catapult, feed, keep everything nice and relaxed. Because the minute you start rushing is when you start, you, you like spray bait everywhere, you lose fish, you ping them off, so it's all about being keeping controlled, really. I mean, the catapult, the wind's not making me catapult in too easy today, so I might even think about putting a pot on in a minute and potting some casters in. No different to sort of pellet fishing for carp and stuff, really. And they're fun, and a lot of people think, oh, you can't. They kind the pellets in, but you can kind their other baits in as well. As in, I mean, like pole potting them in. Just makes everything a bit more accurate, but some days catapulting is better because you've got the attraction and stuff of the noise. You see, they're a lovely, lovely stamp they are. Really nice fish. So your initial feed when you're silver fishing is really important when it comes to feeding ground bait. Now, a massive thing is what we call fishing past a bait. So by this, I mean potting the bait short and fishing past. Now, a really good way to do this on a lot of these poles nowadays, you get one of these, and these are called effect section or a dolly butt, as some people call them. So basically how we do this is, say this is our section, I'll feed here. So obviously be back on my elbow like this. I'll feed at this position, but then when I'm fishing, I actually put that on and that goes in there and then I can either fish just past my bait or well, this is actually 86 centimetres so I've got the option I can fish just past my bait like that I can fish on my bait or I can go really far past it like that so you know I've got a bit of play there and I can obviously go past if the fishing's harder I can come into it if they want to eat or I can just go past it I've got so many options so it's a really important tip when you're silver fishing make sure you give it a try so we've had a really good day here today and we're just coming into that last hour now where I think I just want to try and catch a run and hopefully catch some better fish. So I'm actually going to try something a bit different now. You know, we've caught loads of fish and I'm just going to actually try pushing the peg a bit more. So all I've done is I've made my ground bit a bit wetter and I've put more particles in it. So I've put plenty of casters, plenty of micros. I'm just going to put a wet ball in. So that's going to hit the bottom and stay there for a good amount of time. I'm just going to see if it gets me any better stamped fish because we've caught loads and loads of fish today. So I thought good time to experiment really and see if we catch any better fish. So literally all in the pot and like I said same as it started I was going to feed it short about foot short something like that so what I do I just like lean back slightly so I'm going to pop that in there and then rig wise literally I'm not going to change it as like I say we've had a, a really good day we've caught loads of fish so it's just, everything's exactly the same rig wise and stuff like that so what we're going to do is now I'm just going to see what we catch off that ball. We're going to have a bit of an experiment. You know, we've caught a lot of these hand-sized skimmers all the way up to sort of 12 ounces, pound and a half, things like that. So we're going to have a go on it now. So we'll stick with similar hook bait because, to be fair, we tried maggot and caster. Maggots has been the best by far, I'd say. I'm just going to slip a maggot. I'm going to take this pot off now. I'm just going to see what we can catch off that ball. Like, see if it ruins it or we catch more. I've got a feeling it's going to be good because the fish are really feeding well today. <clears throat> So, in terms of putting my rig in and stuff like that, I'm not doing anything different. Just keeping it exactly the same because it's quite ready. Well, we're just altering the feeding now. So, obviously, we've just put that ball in. I'm just going to see what happens. And now it's, it's going to be interesting. It's if we catch a carp, if we catch more carp, or if we catch a better stamp, or we can just catch a, obviously, get a, a longer run without feeding. So, a bit more efficient, even. Straight away, look, we've, we've had a fish straight off that ball. So, they're obviously coming straight to the bait. And like I was saying, I've made that ground bait a bit wetter. So I'm expecting that ground bait to be on the bottom for quite quite a while and sort of break down really slow. So it'll just be releasing a few particles at a time that will. So like I say, if you're coming into your last hour, your match or your session and something like that, you could have a really good run. Because we know the fish are feeding, we can afford to have a bit of a gamble now because we can catch long as well. So long's been brilliant as well, so... If, it, if this is no good, for example, we can just ship out and fish long, but we're giving ourselves a bit of a chance with a bit of a gamble, see, if, see what happens here now. But as you can see, it's just a fish every put in. So, one thing we, I will say with ground bait though, so obviously going into the colder months, you've got to be careful with it because I've had it many times happen when it's happened to me in the winter. Putting ground bait, topping up can actually make or break you at times. I've had it sometimes where it's been good, you know, you put a bit of ground bait, it makes an impact, get the fish back in your swim, or sometimes you'll put your ground bait and it kills it dead. So it's all about learning the venue and reading the day. 
to an extent. Like when we put ground bait in today, like I say, we'll put them little nuggets in and the peg just got better and better and better. So it's not done any harm at all. So I, I feel like we can take a gamble and put like a big amount of ground bait in now, just have a bit of a, a finish hopefully on this line. One thing that's been important as well today is just having your floats really dotted down because some of the bites are tiny. As you can see, we put that in and just fish come straight to it. And as you can imagine, your last hour of your match or your pleasure session, you want to finish it off and we just give ourselves a chance. Again, we're catching the same fish, but hopefully we'll get some better stump fish coming in as well. So one thing that was interesting today, which we've learned coming back onto the short line as such, is when we lose fed, it actually wasn't great, like, we'll, we'll lose feeding casters and basically what were happening was we were missing quite a few bites because the fish were obviously coming off the bottom because the weather's quite warm as well and um, the fish were getting a bit scatty so what we did is we put a little pot back on and just fished it like we did the short line and it, it just settled the peg down and we caught a better stamp again. So, like I say, by using, you've basically got two options I think with silver fishing. You can either lose feed, i.e. with a, a catapult or you can use a little pole pot and sprinkle them in a bit like you do with pellets or you obviously can feel like little nuggets and fish them out and then top up again but that has definitely been the better option today which has obviously been just putting like a little nugget in or or one a chunk depending on how good the fishing is and just fishing it out and it's it's pretty much the same every commercial you go to fishing for silver fish it's either one thing or the other so by starting like I've started as well it tells me a bit but sometimes it tells me a bit about later in the day. So obviously we started on the just kindering, uh, kindering little sort of golf all sizes of like micro pellets and ground bait, and it was good straight away. So that straight away gave me an indicator that I could do it long. If I went in and did, it didn't work at all, then it's telling me it's probably not the right thing to do, and the ground bait might be putting them off. But because we had such a good start on it, I'm not scared to go out there and do it. And like I say. Because the loose feed wasn't working, it told me I could do that and it worked to treat. So again, like I always say, it's all about experimenting, but using, just getting ideas from other lines. So like I say, starting like starting like this, you're not putting lo loads of bait in your peg and you're not messing it up for later on as well. So you can change how you got to feed. So I think it's always a good way to start if you're not sure. This is what I'm talking about, Joe, these. Look at him. So there we go, we've had a cracking day here today at the Glebe, catching some beautiful silvers. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, tight lines.